Hey, Mihai, welcome to Vivid Virtual Days. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me here. I'm glad to be here and share the experience that uh, that we have had with Microfocus and with Accenture in this space. And uh, glad to answer any questions that are coming our way now. Awesome. So I guess one of the first questions is um, the solution that you showed, is this all Microfocus? Is this something uh, with Microfocus and Accenture? Or is it something anyone can implement regardless if they're using either one? Right. So, good question. So, the solution that we currently have is between Accenture and Microfocus. Now, I know for a fact there's another vendor out there. Um, I believe that would be um, either Cap or Infosys that have deployed a similar model with Microfocus, which is a platform software as a service. Um, but to answer back to your question, this particular model that I showed in here in this particular example is literally the one between Accenture and Microfocus. So if you're a client out there that are, is looking to, to, to get onto this model, uh, to get onto this platform, you would only be able to get it through Accenture um, and, and or Microfocus working with Accenture. Very cool. So uh, this is a tricky question, but uh, you did bring it up. You said mm -hmm. uh, testing as a service is not for everyone. Like who would it not be for and who would it be a good candidate for? Like what's the criteria to say, oh, this probably works for me or is this probably not the ideal solution for my particular situation? I, I, I get it. And it's, it's actually a very interesting question. So most of the projects that we have in specifically now testing as a service platform come from SAP and Oracle. So it's all mostly packaged applications. And typically those are perfect for this type of engagement. Now, again, testing as a service platform is, is, is overall a very large solution. You have testing, uh, you know, you have automation as a service, you have performance testing as a service. Um, uh, th this particular platform really applies to the entire holistic solution of, of, of tools from Microfocus that lend themselves to, to the project. So in this case for SAP and Oracle, um, where we have termed implementations that are, that are, uh, that are, um, uh, so, so we have termed projects, then in that case, um, ha not having a significant amount of investment in testing tools in the in the beginning would be an ideal situation for these clients a not so ideal situation for this type of type of engagement would be a very large organization a very large dcoe so let's let's for instance take um let's take bank of america so bank of america has a very very large uh, testing center everybody knows bank of america they're the heart of the industry here in the cmt world in in, in north america now testing as a service um, at that scale it wouldn't fit now, uh, because purely because um, Bank of America would have a direct relationship with Microfocus, and they would they would uh, purchase their their own tools, and I, I'm not saying that they do at the moment, but they could also have an ELA uh, that would allow them to be to be very flexible and to be uh, allow them to consume as they please um, any type of software from Microfocus. However. That being said, if there is a certain area within uh, within the within this particular client, uh, say for instance a small project that is ramping up for DevOps, and they do not wish to engage in uh, or, or have uh, particular licenses from 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 their larger ELA, then they would be able to to, to consume testing as a service platform as a service really, to to get going, get mobilized, get their POC done. Um, get their pilot organized and, and concluded, and then decide whether they want to consume it for going forward and whether if it's scalable for them in terms of pricing and in terms of flexibility, or whether they want to, to uh, consume the, the larger ELA from the, from the company. So I hope that answers your question, Joe. Absolutely. So Mihai, uh, we have another question. Uh, this person wants to know, do you see this platform growing in the future? Oh, absolutely. Um, we, we've, we've seen use cases that we haven't even, even thought of in Accenture, to be quite honest. And myself being the, the architect behind it, I actually haven't really, uh, haven't really uh, even fathomed that, that, that people would start using testing as a service in, in such a way. So uh, the answer to that question is most definitely yes. We see now an uptake in, in app security testing, uh, which is commoditized and it's being, it's being sold on, uh, on, um, um, 
app um, scan per app a model uh, just like just like 45 on demand for microfocus um, with the only difference that we also have services that are associated with those scans and and those those uh, hardenings that that come thereafter and we see the same thing happening in the performance testing side of the world where uh, where we have short-term engagements, uh, we actually have now. Uh, actually, today I was speaking to to, to a client team for uh, within our SAP practice group that has a project that only requires testing for two months. So normally, in that case, this testing as a service platform would fit in 100%. And going forward, uh, looking into the future, if you think about it, uh, really, you have a, a multitude of of releases that are going to be incrementally growing and, um, and 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 teams would have to deliver more and more and more so yes definitely i see the testing as a service platform growing so it's actually a good user case i would think uh, for performance testing if someone's uh, getting ready we just got over black friday cyber monday here in the states i guess in the world exactly uh, so is that a, so, like a use case where uh, testing as a service you've seen especially in performance being utilized well Yes, most definitely yes. Um, so we all know what happened with Best Buy and the Black Friday back in the day, right? <laughs> we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go there. Um, but it's exactly that particular, uh, that particular type of scenario that applies very well to this uh, testing platform as a service, testing tools platform as a service. So. Normally, um, if a client decides to go and spike spike up their their performance tests for a specific weekend, like like uh, you know prior to the Black Friday event, they do have options. They can go to to other vendors. They can go to to Microfocus and 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 request some virtual hours through Stormlight Load, Load, etc. Uh, however, uh, that only applies only once or twice a year. How? Um, if you think about it um, in the in the higher picture, you will have um, and Best Buy actually I think um, is utilizing the same the same type of approach. You have a core set of licenses that you use for performance testing and performance engineering, and then every time you want to spike it up and you want to to uh, to uh, exponentially execute more for a very short period of time, then this performance testing as a service would fit in 100% in there. And think about also, Joe. Uh, think about the smaller organizations. They don't. They cannot afford. You know, all these companies that develop all these mobile apps that are, you know, a media sensation overnight. Um, they cannot afford buying all the tools all all in one go because their IT budget doesn't allow that. So for them, it'll be much easier to just consume what they've what they've paid for, or just pay, or vice versa. You know, ju just pay for what they use. Um, and, and then that's why testing as a service platform is so important because that's where it fits in the picture. Awesome. Great insight, Mihai. All right. Next question. There's more. <laughs> well, would you recommend a client organization to pursue building such a platform or rather focus on different solutions? On a different solution. Interesting question. So yeah. if you're a client company out there uh, with a large testing organization, if you if you function uh, with IT within IT, so if you have an IT as a service and testing, testing, centers, testing center of excellence as a service within your IT organization, then it will be worthwhile pursuing creating a similar model for your own organization. If you are a medium-sized company or a small-sized company that uh, that doesn't have such a large footprint in testing and you don't have a quality factory or a testing center of excellence, then it's pointless. You do, it's just going to be a waste of time, money, and energy. You, do, you need to just consume whatever is out there available from the GSIs. Very cool. So, Mihai, uh, it seems to be a theme. I've been bringing this up. Uh, everyone's talking about security. Even on my podcast, mm -hmm. so this, this this last year, for some reason, security, security, it's always been on our backlog, but it seems to be really in the forefront now. Any reason why? Is this just the new the new rage, or is this something causing this more demand for security? Well, let's see what happens. So you you obviously know the statistics, and about eighty to ninety percent of intrusions and 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 attacks are actually not reported publicly. So we know that every single thing out there, every single application, every single uh, every single server, every single infrastructure that's that's uh, that's open to the public is 
uh, is under threat. So we've seen you know, the recent hacks of Sony and Marriott and even now Disney Plus. I was actually one, one of the people who signed up for Disney Plus and just like that, it turns out that um, that they, they got hacked and the account details were, were stolen. And actually for Thanksgiving last week, my wife and I were, were, were busy phoning Bank of America and um, and um, and making sure that our 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 card is is closed and and people don't buy any more stuff from I don't know liquor liquor stores and buffalo wings in New York. Oh anyway, gosh. so the the point of the matter is yeah, so the point of the matter is it happens every single day whether whether we know about it or not and and security has become so much prevalent these days, especially with with the um, uh, the pandemic. Of, of social media and and the sheer amount of, of mobile applications that are out there, um, the malware is the the, the uh, malwares and and um, and really bad stuff is easily accessible to every uh, every um, every person out there, including you and I, Joe. So yeah. we can go and, and look for for stuff to crack and for stuff to um, uh, to really jeopardize other people's uh, applications. So coming back to your question, yes, we see security coming up as a as, as a really, really important topic in all of our discussions. Uh, in Accenture, security is actually one of the, the most uh, largest growing um, uh, markets at the moment and, uh, and functional lines. And we have a lot of investment going on in security, in cybersecurity labs, secu security centers, uh, security operation centers, SOCs, and so on and so forth. So uh, we do see also companies and our clients investing more and more into into app security, and coming and bringing this all whole um, this whole story line back to to, this, to our testing as a service platform. So how do you start with with your security journey? Do you start in full blown? Build up a brand, a brand new a security uh, center, and invest in a 20, 20 man team, or do you start off uh, small and see how it works and um, and grow from there? And the answer to that question, specifically for small and medium enterprises, is you start off small uh, and you start off with your critical applications, and that's where uh, security testing as a service would fit in there because you only consume for what you um, uh, what you use and sorry, you only pay for what you consume and you only focus your attention on your limited amount of, of energy on what really matters for your company, your critical business applications and, and uh, the applications and, and pretty much everything that's open to, to your end user that you know could be under threat of, uh, of external parties. So that's in a nutshell my answer, Joe. Well, so this is probably a stupid thought just popped in my head. Uh testing as a service almost sounds like you could use it as a POC and go, wow, look at the benefit we got yep. out of the security aspect. Let's go all in and buy a product or if, if um, but it sounds like you have a, a full solution, but if someone really wanted to invest, they probably could as well. Yes. So, so POCs are actually one of the main, uh, one of the main use cases for us. We, we have uh, engaged with a pharma client um, a year and a half ago, uh, a pharma client that has a very large footprint in the market and, um, and as you know, pharma client, just like financial services, they, they are very regulated in the industry and they have, you have to go through, through, through separate stages of, of, uh, of computer validated uh, systems um, uh, processes. And, and in this particular case for pharma, they are subject to CFR part 21 um, regulations and you have to have a validated system. Now, they did not have any kind of testing tools whatsoever. So they were really testing out of Excel sheets. They were testing out of Word documents and it was really a, really a bit of a mess. So what happened is during the, during the, the mobilization phase of the, of the testing center, which took um, over just six to eight months just for the, uh, just for the RFP to be completed and over one year, for the contracts to be finalized and then for the actual services to begin. During that year, we actually use our testing as a service platform with uh, with ALM, uh, with with a out of the box, not not a validation engine um, as mature as the one from TX3 or from the professional services from Microfocus, but with our own little validation engine in, in place. We use that with ALM and with Worksoft as well for automation. And the client was, was actually able to see within six months the impact that these tools and these platforms had in, in, their, testing, uh, in their testing services and, and how they would build the organization 
uh, around the technologies or using the technologies to build their um, their, their center. So when that year was up and they started the, the testing center of excellence, they started off knowing exactly what the tools bring to bear for them and what it, what is the impact and the value that these technologies would, would bring. So then they obviously opted out of the testing as a service platform because the proof of concept was completed and they, they acquired their own dedicated environments, uh, SaaS subscriptions and and so on and so forth. And to this date, they are still working directly with uh, Microfocus and the other vendors to um, to supply their their testing technologies. So yes, POC is definitely a big big use case for 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 this particular platform as a service play. Very cool. So Mihai, uh, next question is: What issues have you found commercially or technically with this model? Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, uh, truth be told, you know, I don't drink coffee, but I'm, I must have had probably about 200 <laughs> coffees while, while negotiating this model with Microfocus. Uh, as you know, legal and marketing uh, departments in any organization um, are, are quite a oh yeah um, quite a thing to deal with. Um, and so, commercially, we had issues with with enabling the, the the contracts with Microfocus um, back in the day, back back when we did this, was still HP. So we took over just one year to get to get through those through those uh, through those hurdles. Then we had issues on uh, inside of Accenture with our legal department and going through the flow down terms and so on and so forth. And that is one of the main reasons why I'm saying if you're a small, medium sized company, you shouldn't be looking into this kind of model uh, or building it out yourselves because you will go through the same uh, growth points as we did before. And it's going to take um, a, a good amount of time to, to resolve those. So coming back to our issues. Those are the main issues, and then uh, we didn't have much trouble at all. I would say um, quite the opposite uh, in convincing the clients that this is actually a, a proper model to consume for them. Um, we did have um, some concerns with regards to security, and we were only able to address those concerns uh, functionally after we've had our first clients using this platform and uh, and and seeing that. Uh, other clients did not have access to to um, to their projects, and user access was was being was being managed um, uh, properly and securely. And then, obviously, we had issues with um, with the whole um, uh, safe harboring with European Union clients that are using this environment that's actually hosted in the U.S. And so, you know, there there were a few security concerns. But we've never had any any major issues. There's no major downtimes. Yes, we had our minor downtimes because the environment is hosted by Microfocus in the back end. So whenever they had, uh, I, I believe there was a there was a hurricane or some flooding happening uh, a couple of years ago in the Houston area in in Dallas, and uh, the data center went down for for a few good hours. So yes, you have those those natural things that are happening with each and every single data center out there. But technically speaking, we do not have much issues at all. Um, probably the only thing I would say was was just um, end user issues accessing this application because everything is web web based. Um, and and you, so you have firewall issues from your company. You have you know admin privileges that you have that you, that we we have companies still struggling with, and now now more recently the whole um, the whole issue with uh, not not supporting internet not supporting IE so LM has to work through the LM Explorer for instance but I mean those are small technical issues uh, small technical challenges not something that's that's so uh, mind-boggling that will will turn your business upside down uh, I would say the most important parts were just from a commercial perspective uh, from a from a legal from a, from a legal standpoint very cool so Mihai also uh, another thing that comes up often is AI especially this year I think you did mention it in your presentation. Um, so the question here is, you mentioned that the future includes AI. What plans do you have to implement hyper automation, i.e. RPA and intelligence? Okay, so I, I know exactly how that question how that question goes because we have the exact same question within Accenture. <laughs> so RPA is RPA is another one of those emerging. Um, if if not, it's not it's not even mature as yet. It's still growing, and we still grow, goes through the same growing pains 
like we did with the other vendors. So within our partner ecosystem, obviously we work with the likes of UiPath and, and Blue Prism and so on and so forth, which have a different view uh, in the world of, of, of how RPA needs to run. Now think about this way. Um, and I'm, yes, it's a bit of shameless marketing here, but I have to say it. Uh, Accenture is actually, uh, has actually been identified by Gardner as, as the top leader in AI ops and, and generally in AI innovation. So coming back to your question uh, that, that you had just posted now for, for, for me, Joe. So do we plan to grow into RPA? Well, yes, absolutely. We are already providing UFT and OO for MicroFocus in this testing as a service platform model. So um, coming back to your previous question, Joe, if, you, if, if anybody wants to run a POC on RPA, then they would be able to use this platform testing as a service, right? Um, and then uh, going into AI, well, let's think about it. You have ALM that sits in the center of everything, right? So that's where your most of your data is uh, from, from a uh, test scripts perspective, whether if it's manual, automated performance, security, etc. All the defects are there. You synchronize it with Jira, you synchronize it with Soulman, you synchronize it with, with ServiceNow, you synchronize it with whatever you need to you need to synchronize it with, right? Whether you do it with the native MicroFocus Connect or with TaskTop Integration Hub, doesn't matter. The, the, whole, the whole idea here is that you have a central hub where you keep all your information, both from development, testing, and from an operations perspective. Now, all of the AI engines function in such a way that they need to harness that data in a meaningful way, and they need to provide mach the machine learning algorithms, algorithms need to have that source to consume. And so the testing as a service platform within just snuggling there, and not just that, just you know, dedicated environments as well. And the for the hyper automation piece, um, you know, I mentioned DevOps. So in DevOps, you would have to have the various different functions coming in together, and the pipeline needs to be generated automatically, and it needs to be run automatically, uh, and the execution needs to happen unattended, and so on and so forth. Now, if you as a client say, okay, well, I have my my uh, my pipeline gener my pipeline. Uh, all set up, but I actually don't have the tools to execute with, except for the open source stuff. You know, we have Selenium, we have SonarCube, we have um, Jira is not open source, but we have some some Jira. You will not be able to fulfill an end-to-end -end complete holistic DevOps tool chain. So now, now if you don't have the tools, you don't want to you don't want to invest in the tools. Then this platform as a, this testing as a service platform would fit in just in there. Right, because you only consume just when you execute. Now, I'll be very honest with you. We haven't had that situation as yet, where where people uh, are working in a very um, in a very commoditized DevOps manner to just uh, pay for what they've used in in their DevOps projects. But we are heading there. That's for sure. And then, obviously, besides just the DevOps piece, uh, coming back again to RPA and AI people will want to see it before they before they purchase it so again coming back to the poc of, of it all the, P, the poc concept of it all this this platform would fit in exactly at home in the in that particular scenario and yes with ai ops we have the combination between itom uh between between the ADM pieces and then uh, the way we combine them with with our um, we, we call it a service assurance platform in, in Accenture is basically ITOM as a service and just like we have this whole ADM as a service testing as a service platform so you have multiple options to to chop and change and, and fixing all these small little all, all these small little pieces to be uh, to be enabled for AI ops to be enabled just for for DevOps and to be enabled for DevSecOps overall, and all in all, uh, while enabling your your AI initiatives. Awesome, so Mihai, I don't know where the time went. I'm ten minutes over, and uh, it still feels like I've only talked to you for five minutes. So, uh, one last question: Any parting words of wisdom you want to leave the Vivid Virtual Days ADM attendees? Um, not really. Just uh, well, 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 obviously, yes. Um, <laughs> So uh, please just go and see all the other all the other uh, topics. Um, I think that we have a great deal of um, of speakers and and uh, an agenda lined up for you. Uh, a lot of useful information. You can connect straight to to, to to the experts. We are very happy to share with with you all the uh, all the collective experience we we we've we've acquired throughout the years and all the all the pain points as well and all the lessons learned that we've had so you don't have to go through the same exercises and go through the same uh, coffee drinking and 
um, <laughs> swear words, uh, making <laughs> exercises like we did. Um, and with that, I would like to thank you for the time. I know it's it's everybody has very busy schedules, and thanks for the time to to come and see Joe and myself and the rest of the people at Vivid. And uh, stay safe for the holidays. Don't drink and drive. Uh, drink and then drive, or at least get an Uber. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks. Thanks again, Mihai. I know you really came through. You were sick all week and you were hacked and you still <laughs> I, created I good me. sessions. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah, you're most welcome. Take care, so, Joe. Thanks. Cheers.